Welcome back to Cityscape. In this episode of Secret People, we will cover Carol Quigley, an American historian and political science professor. His writings about a global elite has given him popularity amongst people like Alex Jones in the conspiracy community, but Quigley remains mostly unknown to mainstream, which qualifies him as a secret person. As always, let's start with his background. Carol Quigley was born in Boston. He attended Harvard University, where he studied history. He earned his BA, MA, and PhD degrees all at Harvard. Afterwards, he taught at Princeton University, and then at Harvard, and finally, at the School of Foreign Service at Georgetown University. From 1941 to 1972, Carol Quigley taught a two-semester course at Georgetown on the development of civilizations. Many alumni from that school claimed that this was the most influential course they had taken. One of Carol Quigley's students was former President Bill Clinton himself, who obtained a B in his class. You may think this is a lackluster grade, but most students obtain a D or worse from Quigley. The impact Carol Quigley had on a former president is not trivial. During his presidential nomination, Bill Clinton mentioned Quigley as one of the characters that profoundly affected his development, in addition to being professor at Georgetown and Bill Clinton's mentor. Quigley served as a consultant to the U.S. Department of Defense, the U.S. Navy, the Smithsonian Institution, and the Committee on Aeronautics and Space Exploration. So why was Quigley such a well-sought-after and influential man? Well, to put it simply, he was a brilliant historian and social analyst. His research on Western culture is rigorous and very comprehensive. Quigley's most notable works are Tragedy and Hope, The Anglo-American Establishment, and The Evolution of Civilization. I have not read The Anglo-American Establishment, so I cannot comment on it here. However, I have read Tragedy and Hope, and this phenomenal work blew me away. Tragedy and Hope not only covers the recent movements of Western civilization, but also does an excellent job at explaining why there are such large gaps between societies around the world. Tragedy and Hope is also a book conspiracy theorists love to quote as proof that there is an existing cabal that rules the planet. This is because Quigley remarks that global affairs are run by a group of international bankers. Unlike Ford, he did not claim there were Jews, but a diverse group of men led by Anglo-Saxon founders like Cecil Rhodes. Here is a statement from the book. There does exist, and has existed for a generation, an international Anglophile network which operates, to some extent, in the way the radical right believes the Communists act. In fact, this network, which we may identify as the Round Table Groups, has no aversion to cooperating with the Communists, or any other groups, and frequently does so. I know of the operations of this network because I have studied it for 20 years, and was permitted for two years, in the early 1960s, to examine its papers and secret records. I have no aversion to it, or to most of its instruments, but I have objected, both in the past and recently, to a few of its policies. But in general, my chief difference of opinion is that it wishes to remain unknown, and I believe its role in history is significant enough to be known. Tragedy and Hope A History of the World in Our Time It is important to note that Quigley is not antagonistic towards this elite, but simply protests against them operating in secrecy. Those of you interested in geopolitics and recent Western history should most certainly read Tragedy and Hope. Link in the description. The next book to discuss is The Evolution of Civilization, perhaps the most brilliant yet overlooked work of Carol Quigley. He begins this work by defining what a civilization is. According to Quigley, a civilization is a society that invents. He then states that civilizations expand and die in concentric circles. Their core are the first to perish, and their most outer periphery is the last to go. 
In the case of Western civilization, he states that its core studied in France after the French Revolution, then expanded to Britain, Germany, with America being the outermost ring. The first three cores have already perished, according to Quigley. America is the last leg standing. Quigley goes on to say that a civilization starts to die when its social instruments become institutions. I'm going to repeat that one more time. A civilization starts to die when its social instruments become institutions. This observation is brilliant and original, but requires a bit of explaining. Elements such as marriage, education, police, firefighting, and even national defense were not done in the past by institutions. They were social instruments used by people as tools to survive. These social necessities were not performed by a separate entity, but by the community itself. For example, in early America, there were no full-time paid firefighters. When a house caught on fire, everyone nearby became a firefighter by doing their part. As a society approaches death, however, such collective effort becomes non-existent. Its social vehicles become institutions that seek their own enlargement, not the advancement of the community. So marriage becomes an industrial complex that keeps attorneys in the hospitality industry well paid. Education becomes an institution that seeks ever more funding, larger facilities, and bigger endowments, while delivering abysmal academic results. The military becomes a vehicle for people to get college money, status, or retirement after 20 years. The police becomes an organization that extorts the community for funds through countless fines. Prison becomes an industrial complex rather than a place for reform, and so on. The end result is a society without any real social cohesion. People are loyal to a company, an organization, or some government agency, but not their fellow citizen. Dying civilizations are dominated by institutions, not a common culture. Quigley summarizes this condition through the following statement. The lower middle class is petty bourgeoisie. These people seek their security in status status in an organizational structure. They try to find a place for themselves in an organization which has a hierarchy in which they can count on moving up automatically, simply by surviving. Some people still think that most Americans are active, assertive, aggressive, self-reliant people who need no help from anyone, especially the government, and achieve success as individuals by competing freely with each other. That may have been true a hundred years ago, it isn't true today. Today, more and more of us are petty bourgeoisie who snuggle down in a hierarchical bureaucracy where advancement is assured merely by keeping the body warm and not breaking the rules. It doesn't matter whether it is education or the armed services or a big corporation or the government. Notice that high school teachers are universally opposed to merit pay. They are paid on the basis of their degrees and years of teaching experience. Or consider the professor. He gets his Ph.D. by writing a large dissertation on a small subject, and he hopes to God he never meets anyone else who knows anything about that subject. If he does, they don't talk about it. They talk about the weather or baseball. So our society is becoming more and more a society of white-collar clerks on many levels, including full professors. They live for retirement and find their security through status in structures. So, is America dying? Carol Quigley says yes. In fact, both his work, Tragedy and Hope, and The Evolution of Civilization, preempts the death of Western civilization as a whole. So, what is the hope? After all, the title is Tragedy and Hope, not just tragedy. Well, the hope, according to Quigley, is that the new generation can prevent this collapse by reorganizing America's social fabric. This can be done by reinstituting its traditional culture of self-reliance and strong local communities. I hope some of my viewers tackle this challenge. See you next time.